Should you learn to code in 2025? That's the big question on everyone's mind. And I think you'll be surprised by my answer, but hey, don't assume you know what I'm gonna say just because I've been teaching coding on this channel for the last 10 years. And before that, I was a professional software consultant for seven years because in the last three weeks, I have vibe coded and published three apps into the app store and I plan to do more. And if you're down with the lingo, you'll know that vibe coding basically means using AI without any coding. So I think I'm in a great position to talk about this right now. Is it worthwhile to learn how to code in 2025? Let's dive into this rabbit hole together and I'm sure by the end, you'll be able to come to a clear decision. Now to make things interesting, I'm going to argue from both sides. Let me know which side you agree with more. Let's start with the arguments against learning to code because I think that's what's on everybody's mind. Okay, so my first argument against learning to code is that AI coding is getting increasingly better. Last year, I laughed at the idea that AI could replace developers. Since then, AI has gotten so good that even developers are using AI to build their prototypes and weekend projects without looking at the code and just pressing go. And that's where this term vibe coding comes from. You just sit back and relax and tell AI what to do. And you know what? People are actually building full-fledged games and apps this way. And I've personally tried it out myself. I vibe coded three different apps in the last three weeks and got them published on the app store. Personally, I wouldn't trust any of this AI written code in mission critical systems such as online banking or on airplanes. But I do know there are a lot of smart people working on this problem. After seeing how far AI has come since I spoke about it last year, I am open to the idea where it can get good enough that it codes everything. If anything, it's opened my mind to that being a possibility. The second argument against coding is that junior developers are getting replaced by AI. Now, I may just be in a bubble, but I do see a lot of posts online saying that junior developers are getting replaced by AI tools such as Devon. These AI agents and tools promise to replace parts of your engineering teams. And I think probably the first to go are the junior developers who are just learning the ropes because it's probably easier and cheaper to use an AI tool than to spend money and time and training and mentoring to bring up a junior developer. Now, at least that's just my guess because as I've said, I've been out of the professional working environment for the last 10 years. So if you are a professional working in software development company, are you seeing this happen? Comment below and let me know. But even if it's not currently true that junior developers are getting fired, my concern is that the idea is already out there. These tools and these AI agents making these promises, ideas are dangerous and it can gain momentum and it can get into the minds of the wrong people, especially those in charge. When I was an undergrad in computer science, I had internship opportunities at real companies to get real work experience on the job. I even got paid for this experience. I just can't see this happening, that companies would invest money and time to bring up these interns if there are these promises out there of these tools really doing the job cheaper and more efficiently. Which leads me to my next argument that, again, hearsay, that it's harder for junior developers now to find work opportunities. There's less companies willing to take a chance on junior devs and to train them up because of these tools and these AI technology. Again, if any of you watching are HR managers at tech companies, comment below, share your knowledge. I would love to know. But again, even if it's not currently widespread, the fact that I'm hearing about this online means that there probably is a shred of truth to it. And I think with the job industry looking so bleak for new developers, who would want to learn to code and become a junior developer only to face this dire landscape? But it makes me wonder if companies are not giving junior developers chances to grow into senior developers, then how are we gonna have more developers in the future? Because the next argument is about current developers in the work industry feeling pressure from the top. I saw the survey that now it is expected that some companies that developers are using AI tools. That's just another way of saying that the people at the top want to get more out of their development team for nothing. That it's expected that developers now are using these tools and producing more. They're coding faster, right? But when I speak to these working professionals, I hear that these AI coding tools are not really up to par just yet. They don't integrate well with the workflow. They're not producing the code that they need and they're spending more time wrestling with the tool and it's probably faster if they just coded it themselves. But the problem is that the CEO and the people at the top, they are buying into this AI hype that it's some magic fairy dust that can just produce awesome software. When in reality, the people who are actually building the software is saying that these tools are not that. So there's a disconnect somewhere. It is the developers that are caught in the middle expecting to increase their output, but having to use these tools that are filled with broken promises. You know, me vibe coding three little apps is not the same thing as producing robust and secure software for mission critical systems in a professional environment. Those are two different things, okay? So don't get those mixed up. I just feel really bad for developers right now who are in the workplace because they're caught in this really tough place. So my three arguments for not learning to code in 2025 is that 
AI tools are getting so good, why would you need to learn how to code when these tools can do it for you? Number two, job prospects are really bad for new developers. So learning to code, the payoff just isn't there. And number three, even if you actually land a job and you're in the working industry, there is so much pressure on current developers that are unrealistic. Now let's switch hats and talk about the arguments for learning coding in 2025. And my first argument is that coding is not what you think it is. It's not just typing on a keyboard, writing characters, commanding computers to do things. It is a complete set of methodologies, best practices, software design patterns. It is about producing robust and secure software. And I can't stress how important that is. When you learn to code, and I mean that as you're learning software development, it's not just about learning the, the coding language or the syntax. Software development is a practice and it comes with rigor, it comes with systems, it comes with frameworks and best practices, all with the goal of producing software that works and it works well, it works as expected and it doesn't fail. For example, there's different methodologies like test-driven development where you write the test cases to make sure that the software works as expected before you even write the code. There's agile for software systems that need to constantly change or evolve. There's the waterfall method, which is the more traditional method where you go through the different phases of requirements, design, and like planning and development, testing, like all that sort of stuff. In addition to that, there are extensive quality assurance or QA processes to make sure that when you add new features to software, it doesn't break old ones. Testing is its whole thing. And there are people in software development dedicated to just testing software. There are practices around triaging bugs, which means just managing things that need to be fixed and also like user feedback and things like that. And there's a whole other set of skills for deployment. If you're managing multiple releases and updates, how does that happen? And then there's another set of practices for writing performant code. And that involves, first of all, being able to measure how efficient your code is so that you can gauge, because two pieces of code can result in the same functionality, but one might perform way slower than the other. And so that is its own whole thing as well. So when we're talking about coding, it's not just about writing lines of code for it to be able to do something. There's all this other stuff that works together to culminate a great piece of software. So if you don't learn to code, and you just vibe code, you're not gonna understand or get any of that. Argument number two is that you don't know what you don't know. And let me tell you what that means. It means that two things actually. So number one is that when you're learning to code, you're not just gonna learn how to code, but you're gonna learn about other things such as databases and networking. You're gonna learn how computers talk to each other. You're gonna learn how to make requests from computer to computer. You're gonna learn about queues and concurrency and all of these other concepts that let you know what is possible when you're writing software. So if you don't have that knowledge in your head, you're severely limited by the ideas that you can have. And number two, if you don't have that knowledge, it's also gonna be very hard for you to express yourself. Because what I noticed from Bob Coding is that it is very, very important, or it helps a lot for you to be able to tell AI what you want and to articulate that because it still can't read your mind. You might have in your head what you want it to do, but a software developer thinks really differently. So to give you a very basic example, I think it paints the picture. So you might say something like, I want a text box where the user can enter his or her name. Whereas a software developer might say, I want a text box that's going to allow the user to enter in a string that represents their name. It should be limited to 50 characters after which we are going to truncate it and the users should not be able to submit an empty text box. We should remove all white spaces and new lines before we use that data from the text box. They should not be able to enter symbols and other strange characters into it. So that's just one example. And we're just talking about a text box. When you magnify that across an entire piece of software, you can see how the outcome between you know, a non-coder versus a coder, the, the software that is created is going to be vastly different. Which leads me to my third argument that learning to code ironically helps you to use these AI tools to not code because I've found that AI does have its faults in that it goes in circles. Like live coding these apps, I've realized that you can get 80% of the way there really, really quickly. Like in a matter of hours, you can have this idea 80% done. But that last 20% where you're just nitpicking on things, maybe there are little bugs, you're chasing little edge cases to just get it to become production ready. That part takes an even longer amount of time. Oftentimes it was just literally faster for me to jump in and make a change, change like one line of code or move, to move this line here to there then to prompt AI and then watch it spin its wheels and upend the whole project, ripping code from different places and like hallucinating errors and then having to fix that. Oh man, there, there are sometimes it's quite a nightmare. So anyways, I think learning to code will actually 
help you to not code. It'll make it more efficient for you to buy code. And lastly, argument number four, we should learn to code because the GitHub CEO said we should learn to code. No, I'm just joking. So the arguments for learning to code in 2025 is that you're gonna learn all of the best practices for producing great software. You're gonna be able to open up your mind as to what is possible for you to build. And you are going to become more efficient at not coding by investing just a little bit of time to learn the basics of coding. And I think a fourth one just in my head is that if nobody learns to code anymore, how are we actually going to have real engineers? Because I still don't feel comfortable using an online banking platform that I know is vibe coded. Do you know what I mean? Or sitting on an airplane where I know the system is vibe coded. If no one learns to code, how are we gonna have like real software engineers be building real software? Okay, so let's bring it all in. Should you learn to code in 2025 or not? Well, you need to have context. What is your goal? If your goal is to produce software as a career, then you should definitely learn to code. There is so much more to coding than just getting something to work, which is essentially what vibe coding is. On the other hand, if you just want to realize an idea that you have and it's not super complex, then you can probably get away with not learning to code and just vibe code it into existence. You'll be able to speed up your time. You'll be able to validate your idea a lot faster and the stakes are not high at this point. But I think that if your idea gains traction, you probably have to hire some real engineers to build it from scratch. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my arguments? Are there arguments for coding or against coding that I didn't consider? Let me know in the comments below. At the very least, tell me which camp you're in. Learn to code in 2025 or don't learn to code in 2025. Let me know in the comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.